Hello everyone, what is going on? Now I've been playing this little hidden gem called This War of Mine, The Little Ones. And I pick it up in the sales and boy oh boy am I enjoying it. This War of Mine is a survival game inspired by the Bosnian War in 1992 and 1996. You take control of up to four characters and in a nutshell, you have to make them survive until the end of the war. This involves keeping them well fed, well rested and as happy as possible in your own little sort of world that you create, you build your own destroyed settlement to try and keep them alive. You also go out every single night and scavenge. The areas that you try and scavenge looking for goods and loot will have other scavengers there and they'll either be trying to take the stuff before you take it or there'll be bandits who will attack you. You may be able to trade as well but you know it's a dangerous ruthless place out there. You may also come across a helpless couple who are begging you not to take their stuff and just leave them be and you have to choose whether or not to rob them and leave them with absolutely nothing or leave yourself despite you having very little. And this is where the game excels and makes you make difficult decisions to try and survive. Sometimes you might have to kill someone just for their food or weapon and the act of killing them truly grounds you within this world. Some characters handle the killing worse than others. Some will, will go into a broken state which will make them refuse to work and just be depressed all the time. They won't be able to sleep or eat or guard and they just basically become useless. Others will be saddened but consider it a necessity to survive. Every single character you pick within this world is different and they bring different perks and different challenges with them which makes it such an in-depth game. I thoroughly love this game through the four playthroughs that I played. Each playthrough can be finished in around four to ten hours depending on how long you set the game and the challenges that you face within because every single playthrough is different. The only real issue I had with the game was the fact that there is no tutorial at all and some of the mechanics are not straightforward, it doesn't tell you really what to do so I found the first four to five hours I was sort of wandering around making loads of mistakes which resulted in people starving or people actually dying. So in this video I'm going to discuss with you 10 beginner tips on how to get the best playthrough possible for this war of mine, the little ones. This is Gamer Culture TV and welcome to another video. Do not forget to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out and it really encourages me to keep on making videos. That being said, let's get straight into it. Tip number one is going to talk about character selection. So when you start out your own custom game, which can be done after seven days of the story mode, which I highly advise because a custom game allows you to change difficulty and choose when you want winter to come so you can be a little bit more prepared. The characters that I recommend are Roman, Marco, Marin and a child and I'm going to explain that now. Roman is a tough guy, he's a fighter, he's fine with killing people when necessary and he's a great guard. He has a small inventory so usually I would use him to go clear out a site, maybe scare someone off or kill somebody before sending in the scavenger to loot everything. Next is Marco, he will be the scavenger of the group and he has an inventory of 15. Boris does have an inventory of 17, which is the biggest in the game. The reason why I do not recommend Boris is because he's mentally quite soft. He hates killing, he hates robbing, and basically if you kill anyone within the group, he'll get depressed and sometimes broken, which means he's in a mental state where he can't come back and do anything. Mark was a little bit more lenient with this, which makes him a better, more rounded character. The final character that I would recommend is Marin. Marin is the builder of the group, he can build things using less resources, which is essential because the resources in the game do not replenish once you've used, once you've found them, you've found them and you can only use them once. And especially in the earlier, earlier stages when you have less, Marin can be really, really useful. The final person I would recommend after that would be the child. This is basically because if you're in a trophy hunting, you need the child to get a lot of the trophies to collect. They require less food to keep going and they can help around the house making things like food and water, so they can be just as handy. You could go for a fourth adult, but I wouldn't really recommend it because they don't bring that much more to the table other than an extra mouth to feed. Tip number two is, when you first start out on day one, loot absolutely everything within your base settlement. You will find loads of essentials including food, medicine and materials, which will help you craft some of the essentials coming up in the next tip. You have to build the priorities first. Tip number three is to build the metal workshop ASAP and then build a shovel and a crowbar. These are essential in the beginning stages of the game. Firstly, because some of the areas within your own base will be blocked off and need to be accessed by using either, either the shovel or the crowbar. And secondly, the first few sites you visit, there will be nobody there so you'll have no trouble with anybody having to fight or anything. So you can loot to your heart's content, however you will need a shovel and a crowbar to fully access the areas and get the good stuff such as the medicine. Once you have built the metal workshop, the next thing you want to build is the cooking stove. This allows you to make more filling meals for the survivors. 
Raw food takes two amounts of it to quench one level of hunger, whereas tin food or cooked meals will only require one meal to quench one level of hunger. So it makes a big difference eating raw and cooked food, just like in real life, and it's essential long term within the game. The next tip is to avoid fighting or killing anyone in the first eight to ten days. This is because there's plenty of loot going around in the first five nights anyway, so you don't really need to kill anybody. Killing people will have a negative impact on the entire group regardless who does the killing, and too much of it will just ruin the game. In my experience, you can only get away with four or five killings throughout the entire game anyway, excluding bandits, because you can get away with a little bit more. If you kill any more than four or five people, you'll find that survivors within the group will start to have their mental state changed to broken, which means they can't do anything, they just sit around crying, and eventually they will leave the group altogether and steal a lot of your supplies, and you can't, come, you can't get them back. There are plenty of locations to trade in as long as you have something to trade. Medicine, weapons, booze are all great things to trade with. The next tip is to build up your defences to protect from raids. Now you should be working on boarding up walls at least once every two days. Doing this reduces the chance of being raided which keeps your supplies safe and protects people from being injured. You do not want to be going through your bandages unnecessarily, I assure you that. Once you get the reinforced door built, you can actually have everybody sleep and you do not need a guard anymore, which means that you can have people work harder during the day and then they can just rest at night, which is a great bonus. Tip number seven is to be aware of when visiting traders come to your door. Traders will visit your home every three days, so make sure you keep track of this. They are excellent for buying materials, that way you can focus on scavenging the valuable items like food, medicine and booze when you're out on a night. Also they can be a lifesaver if someone's seriously injured or ill and you can buy supplies from them if you have to. The next tip is about food and water and that is to create two rat traps and two water dispensers as soon as you can. This will help provide a steady supply of water and food to your survivors that does not need to be found so you do not, do not have to worry about going out every night looking for food. Having a stockpile of water is essential because you use water for cooking food and creating alcohol which is amazing for trading. These next two and our final tips are going to be a bit on the darker side. These tips are really for when you're hitting a low and people are starving. Tip number nine is to rob the priest and his flock at St. Mary's Church. If you go down to the first lower level near the stairs and behind the first door on the left there's a cupboard full of items which you can steal including lots of food, lots of medicine and a little bit of ammunition. If you sneak you can steal all of this and leave without being caught or killing anyone. Then after three to four days this cupboard actually replenishes so you can do the whole process all over again. You do have to be careful with stealing because it can affect morale but if you're hitting a low it can just save everybody. Now our final tip does involve a little bit of muck duck which is when you visit the garage. The garage is a trading post that only consists of one son and his ill father who has incredibly low health. You can kill the son with a knife with Roman very easily and you can loot a handgun, knife and ammo from his corpse. Plus the rest of the garage is full to the brink with food, weapons and medicine. This should be a last resort as it will affect the happiness of the group and make sure you use Roman to do it as he can justify killing those people better. But it is a great way to get lots of resources. So that's it guys. There was 10 tips to help you survive the struggles of this war of mine. If you guys have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them down below. I've put about 50 to 60 hours into this game over the past two weeks. And because of this, I think I'm quite experienced with it now. And I think it's just a truly amazing game. I would like to thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.